In high school, I didn't realize that completing the square literally means to complete the square. Here's what I mean. First, let's take a look at some algebra tiles. We have our x squared, x, and 1 tiles, and take note of their side lengths. So with these tiles, I can see that x squared plus 8x plus 16 is a square, because I can arrange them as a square. x squared, 8x is 16 once. Now, what are the side lengths of this square? Well, we have x plus 4 all around. So I can rewrite this as x plus 4 quantity squared. Now, let's go back to our original problem. We have our x squared over here, and with our x's, we need to split them in half and put half up here and half over here, because that's the only way we can make a square. Then let's place the six ones in this area. And let's show the other side of the equation as well. Now remember, our goal is to literally complete the square. So what do I need to add over here to complete the square? Well, three ones. But I just can't add three ones on the left. I need to add three ones on the right, and both sides have to be squares. And when we add three on both sides, we get two squares. Now, believe it or not, this equal sign says that these two squares are the same size, meaning we can compare their side lengths. So with this square on the left, the side lengths are x plus 3 all around. But what about the square on the right? Well, we have a square with an area of 4, so what times itself equals 4? Well, 2 times 2 equals 4, but also negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4. So because we have two squares with the same areas, we can set their side lengths equal to each other. So we can say x plus 3 equals 2, or x plus 3 equals negative 2. And we can isolate x to get our answer. So completing the square is just two steps. Literally complete the square so we have square equals square, and then set their side lengths equal to each other.